Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Dave, an incoming second year medical student here in the Philippines. Ah, no by snow. Ah, Wow. If you're new here to my channel, I'm making content from my medical school applications to my real-life activities as a medical student. Before we start, I would just like to say thank you and we reach a 1,400 subscriber mark here in YouTube. And thank you for all the love and support from you guys. And I ask you guys on what content you want to see next. Here's the poll. And as you can see, ang nanalo natin for our poll is you want to know the first year subjects that you will encounter as a freshie in medical school. So without further ado, so first disclaimer lang, these subjects may be just offered in my school. Other schools might offer different core subjects for the first year. Like for the Manila Theological College, they offer already radiology for their year level 1. So for my school, which is Central Escolar University, these are my subjects. And we will talk about them one by one. So first, anatomy. So in this subject, you will learn the main parts of the body, their location, their blood supply, their lymphatic drainage, and their correlations like anterior ba siya, posterior ba siya. So, in this subject, you will encounter new words or maybe familiar words na kayo, eh, pero dito nyo siya constant magagamit like anterior, posterior, superior, distal, proximal, and you will encounter different planes like Transverse plane, coronal plane, actions like flexion, abduction, adduction. So that sums up the whole anatomy as a subject. So if you're a traditional pre-med course or a health allied course, you already have an anafi subject for your undergrad. But in medicine, it's a whole year subject na hiwalay pa sa physiology. So anatomy is a whole year subject and physiology is a whole year subject. So later on, we will talk about physiology and what physiology is all about and ano ba yung mga topics na may encounter nyo. So in anatomy, you will talk about the body parts as a system and as a region. So mainly kapag first year ka, ang una nyo pag-uusapan syempre is the skeletal system and then you will go to the musculoskeletal system and you will encounter almost all of the muscles in the body because some of the muscles will be discussed later on on a particular part of the body na i-discuss nyo na. And then, magiging next nyo dyan will be the thorax, will be the abdomen, will be the, the pelvis, the perineum, extremities, tapos mag-head and neck kayo. Siguro difficulty level ng anatomy for me will be 7. 7 out of 10? I think I will give anatomy as a 7 out of 10 or maybe 8 out of 10. Kasi ang anatomy kasi talaga... You just have to read the book para ma-understand mo. And another tip is you read side by side with your atlas which is the Netter Atlas of Human Anatomy. Mas maiintindihan mo kasi yung correlation ng mga organs, ng body parts kapag sabay mo siyang inaaral. Because sometimes yung libro, masyadong intricate yung pagkaka-explain niya. But in the atlas, makikita mo siya visually na nandun na na ito talaga yung katabi niya. But syempre, iba pa rin kapag may human cadavers na na pinag-uusapan. So, we'll talk about that more. So, in anatomy, yes, you will use human cadavers. I encountered some questions before if we use real human cadavers. And yes, we use real human cadavers for our dissection. And we use them for academic purposes only. May mga bagay na hindi matuturo yung mga professors namin or our books na maituturo ng mga cadavers namin. So, for the reference books, my school uses this book. This is Clinical Anatomy by Regions, 9th edition. I think meron ng 10th edition nito. I will just put the price here na lang sa baba ng original book because this is a reprint book. And I think same lang din naman siya. If you want PDFs, I will leave my Google Drive down in the description below for the first year subjects. And you can check my description box often because I leave my Google Drives there for your references. Little glimpse lang kung paano siya. So, this one. Ayan. Yun, before I forgot, this is the Atlas of Human Anatomy. Like I said kanina, this will accompany your reference book for human anatomy. Other schools use more and Grave use as their main reference book for their anatomy class. But in our school, we use Snell. So, 
a glimpse of the human anatomy book is this one yan so i will also leave the price na lang dito and also the pdf version down below i think this is still the latest version the 7th edition so next subject is somewhat related for anatomy which is histology we will study like mga tissues, um, the cell, layers ng mga parts like the mga blood vessels, ng organs, like histological layers nila. Ganun yung pag-uusapan natin sa histology. So for my school, because we ha our professor is Dr. Gonzalez, we use his book, Esteban and Gonzalez textbook on histology. But other schools use Junquera. I don't know how to pronounce it, pero yun yun. Um, for my school, we don't have um, microscopes. Uh, we use digital microscopy. So, nakaka-computer kami and all of the slides are downloaded sa computer and dun namin siya inaaral. So, we can zoom it like 100 to 1,000 times. And yun yung inaaral namin for our histology. A glimpse of the book is like this. Um, pure lecture siya. And then, may mga... Somewhat slides kang mahikita around the book. So, I forgot the price of this one, pero around 800 ata yung price nito. And sa CNE lang din siya. And sadly, walang PDF tong libro na to because this is the book of our professor. If I will grade histology, I think I will grade histology 8.5 out of 10 because I medyo nahirapan talaga ako sa histology because hindi ko siya visually nakikita like personally kung nakikita sa harap ko. That's why I'm having a hard time studying histology and buti na lang na-survive ko siya and in my school kasi magkasama si gross anatomy and histology when it comes to grading so na I think nakatulong yung grade ko for anatomy para may angat niya yung histology. Next of the anatomy family is the neuroanatomy. So in neuroscience, syempre dito natin pag-aaralan yung brain, the central nervous system, the spine, the spinal cord, and everything. So, bawat part ng brain pag-uusapan nyo and how it functions. So dito natin siya matatakel. So for the reference book for the neuroscience subject is The Clinical Neuroanatomy by Snell. I also have the link down below and... I think may bagong version na to, the 8th edition, pero ito pa rin yung ginamit namin nung batch ko. So, nakakatulong naman siya. Pagdating ng second semester, we change book. We change to Clinical Neuroanatomy and Neurophysiology of Manter and Gats. Sorry, this don't have a PDF, so hindi nyo siya makikita sa baba. And I will also leave the prices here. Makikita nyo dito sa baba. So, for neuroanatomy, I enjoyed neuroanatomy because it's the brain. We get to hold and study the brain. Uh, merong kaming inaaral na coronal section, yung transverse section niya. Inaaral namin siya parts by parts. So, nag-start kami from the whole hemisphere itself. Tapos, we gradually go to the medulla, the pons, the spinal cord, the blood supply, the venous drainage. And, syempre, pinag-usapan din namin dito ang cranial nerves. So, if you know the dance of the cranial nerve, yung sensory-sensory-motor-motor mix, that's nice. That way, can help you. And there are a lot of mnemonics that you can use to help you study anatomy and neuroanatomy as well. So if I will grade neuroanatomy, this is one of the subjects na sobrang na-enjoy ko. And sobrang fun din kasi ng professor namin sa CEU. Hello po kay Dr. Estrada. I think I will grade neuroanatomy 7 out of 10 siguro or 8 out of 10 then just like my grade in anatomy because it's fun and tactile ko kasi siya nakikita as a visual person. Next, one of the most hardest subject I've encountered in my life. You know, I'm a math student and I and most of you guys, math is hard, but no, biochem is harder. So next is biochemistry. I don't know how to give you tips for biochemistry because this is one of the subjects that sobra nag struggle ako as a medical student. I really don't understand it. I really can't comprehend it. Ah, uh, I don't know. Siguro, kung merong math anxiety, meron siguro akong biochem anxiety. Pag biochem na yung pinag-uusapan, para nag-shut down yung utak ko. So, this is the book, Harper's Illustrated Biochemistry 30th Edition. I also have a PDF there, and I will leave the original price here. So, if you, went by, if you will buy original book or the hardbound book, 
you can buy it. In biochemistry, of course, you will study chemistry of the body. Kung ano ba ni nangyayari sa inyo in molecular level. Kapag gumakain kayo, humihinga kayo, kapag tumitibok yung puso nyo, pag nagkasugat kayo, lahat in very molecular level. So, dito nyo, dito nyo may encounter ulit si Krebs cycle, yung mga ganun. So, siguro, kaya rin ako nagkaroon ng anxiety when it comes to biochemistry is wala kasi akong malakas na foundation for chemistry. My last chemistry was high school and then I took just inorganic and organic tong college. Pero, this just part ng extra units na tinake ko just for NMAT. So, hindi rin ako nakapag-take ng biochemistry kasi mas matatagalan ako. And, yun, feeling ko talaga, ito yung pinakamahirap na subject ng first year. So, I will grade biochemistry 11 out of 10. I'm sorry na sobra tayong hap, sobrang lumampas tayo dun sa scoring, pero that's the grade I'm giving biochemistry. Tip ko lang sa inyo how to survive biochemistry. If you're having a hard time reading Harper, there are a lot of reference books that you can use like Lippincott and Leninger na sobra, sobra, sobrang matutulungan talaga kayo intindihin yung biochemistry because biochemistry ng Leninger and Lippincott elaborates or really discusses each topic simple. Unlike when you read Harper, medyo hindi ko siya talaga maintindihan because of that kind of expectation from the book. Pero nung binasa ko si Lippincott and Leninger, somehow naliwanagan ako ng mga topics. But those books that I mentioned are not really that complete. So, in medical school, biochemistry yung, or isa sa subject nyo nagagamit ng sobra daming libro because you also have biochemistry of Marx, you also have a biochemistry by Devlin. And our professor, Dr. Ligo, hello po, Dr. Ligo, I love you so much. So, uses all of those books kapag nagle-lecture siya and sometimes hindi pa namin siya mahanap dun sa dami ng libro na niyang ginagamit. One of the subjects na hindi ko napa-hardbound yung reprints ko is physiology. If you're a health allied undergrad, you already have a glimpse of what physiology is. So in physiology, so you will study the normal mechanism of the body, how it works. Pag humihinga ka, ano nangyayari? Kapag umiihi ka, paano nangyayari? Paano tumitibok yung puso mo? Paano nagkakaroon ng pulsation? Paano? Paano siya? Hi guys, I will insert this video just to check if you're really watching my video. So I just want to ask you guys if you really want me to give something or have a giveaway. I'm planning to give away um uh, index card just to help you do your flashcards and highlighters and i am contemplating giving away my old atlas so yun if nanood kayo ng live ko so check it out i think naka-upload naman na yung previous live ko nandun pinakita ko kung ano talaga yung ipamimigay ko na atlas so yun so comment down below if gusto nyo ipag-give away ko yung atlas ko so Back to the video. Yun yung may encounter nyo in physiology. So, one of the topics na I think all of the medical students na makakapanood nitong video na to that will also agree with me one of the topics na sobrang hirap when it comes to physiology is renal physiology. Reference books that I use for physiology, we use Guyton and Hall and Byrne and Levy. So, those are the main books. But, there are a lot of trick books or parang mas makakatulong sa'yo. Pero syempre, mas gagamitin nyo si Bern and Levy and Guyton and Hall. Pero, these are the books that might help you understand physiology better. So, use Constanzo. I also have a link down below. And use Boron because Boron have a lot of illustrations. This is one of the subjects na sobrang na-enjoy ko. In physiology, I will rate it as around 6.5 to 7 out of 10. Yung level of difficulty niya. Kasi, You just have to read and understand. And another tip for physiology, you can make graphs, flowcharts, tables para mas maintindihan mo yung workflow ng physiology. So, subjects na wala kaming libro are family and community medicine. So, in family and community medicine, you will learn what role does it play in health causation or paano nga ba ang family mo nakakatulong sa paggaling ng isang tao. Paano ba sila nag-i-interact? Paano sila nakaka-affects sa overall health ng isang tao? 
And hindi lang ito about family. Of course, this is the community. Paano ba nakaka-affect yung environment mo, mga kapitbahay mo, even the government or your local government sa iyong personal health as an individual. So, yun yung mga topics na may encounter nyo in family and community medicine. So, in family and community medicine, we also have field work. So, where we interview family and get to know ano nga ba yung epekto ng family nila or ano ba yung beliefs ng family nila when it comes to health? And paano ito nakaka-affect sa perspective nila pagdating sa kalusugan? If I will rate the family in community medicine, its level of difficulty will be around 5 out of 10 because marami lang talaga kayong babasahin dito. Last but not the least, subjects in my curriculum are the medicine and society and andragogy. So first, medicine and society like family and community medicine pero really dito pinag-uusapan yung history of medicine paano ba nag-grow yung medicine or paano yung progression ng medicine from folk medicine or mga herbal medicine from sinayuna pa and yung mga common beliefs ng mga kababayan natin like mga hilot if I will rate medicine and society as a subject it's a fun subject and I will give it around 4 out of 10 level of difficulty because you will just have to listen to your professors and really understand it And output-based din kasi siya and we will make essays, we will make videos. So, ganun yung activities ng medicine and society. So, last subject will be andragogy. So, syempre, familiar tayo sa pedagogy where the teacher is nagsasalita and just the students are just listening. But in andragogy, we all share our own experiences. We help each other to learn and it's like adult learning. Kumbaga, So we are in andragogy. Maybe the experience of one of your classmates can help you learn something new, and your experience can help others learn something new. So ganon yung mga activities when it comes to andragogy. We have topics like stress management, how to handle conflict. If I will rate andragogy, it's a super fun subject. Seguro I won't give it a difficulty rating, but I will give it a fun and enjoyable rating of 10 out of 10. Yun yung bibigay ko sa kanya, hindi level of difficulty, because sobrang na-enjoy namin siya. And sobrang enjoy din kasi ng professor namin. Hello po kay Dr. Canuto. I hope you're doing okay as a frontliner sa PGH. Saludo po kami sa'yo, Doktora. We have three other subjects na may, may encounter when it comes to second semester, which is bioethics. So this will replace andragogy for the second semester. So in bioethics, syempre, as the word itself explains, you will learn bioethics. Level level of difficulty niya siguro around 4 out of 10. So syempre, pag-aaralan niyo lang yung ethics behind everything about medicine. Next subject na may encounter niyo that will replace family and community medicine for the second semester is research. Yes, sa first year, meron na kayong research. This research, syempre, pa encounter nyo, it will be discussed sa inyo yung from the start, what is research, paano kumuha ng topic, paano kumuha ng review of related literature, paano kumuha, mag-compute ng sample size. But in first year, you will encounter a qualitative type of research. And last subject that you will encounter is psychiatry. So, it will be introduced sa inyo around last three weeks ng academic year and it will replace the neuroscience part. Yun lang, it will be just an introduction to psychiatry because you will have another psychiatry subject pag dating nyo ng second year and third year. That's it! Yun yung mga subjects for the year level 1. Comment down below if you have other subjects na in-offer sa medical school nyo. Gusto nyo i-share sa ating mga viewers. And also, comment down below if ano ba sa tingin nyo yung pinakamahirap or yung pinaka na-excite kayo na subjects ngayong darating na academic year. Lalo na, online classes tayo. Again, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and see you to my next video. Bye!